There is a region outside most of the planets in the solar system called the Kuiper Belt. Pluto was the first object discovered in the Kuiper Belt, but it took about 60 years to find more. The first time something from the Kuiper Belt was observed was on November 2, 2015. It used to be one of the most remarkable pictures ever taken from space, but that has now changed. There has never been a clearer image of the Kuiper Belt than the one just captured by the James Webb Telescope. The Kuiper Belt is a cold, donut-shaped area in the outer solar system, located beyond Neptune, the eighth planet from the Sun. It was initially intriguing because of its shape, but it later became evident that this would be one of the most fascinating aspects of our solar system. The Kuiper Belt is named after scientist Gerard Kuiper, whose work in the mid-20th century advanced our understanding of the region beyond Pluto, although he didn't discover it. In 1951, Kuiper wrote a scientific paper speculating about the possibility of objects beyond Pluto. His research focused on the idea of such objects, though it didn't provide specifics about their nature or arrangement in the region. While Pluto was once thought to be the main feature of the Kuiper belt, we now know that Neptune's orbit defines the inner edge of the belt. Neptune's gravitational pull has played a critical role in shaping the movements within the Kuiper belt. Although Kuiper's predictions didn't precisely align with what was eventually discovered, his groundbreaking ideas contributed to the formation of our current understanding of the Kuiper belt. Over time, Kuiper's name became associated with the belt and the objects beyond Pluto. Clyde Tombaugh, the scientist who discovered Pluto in 1930, found it in what we now recognize as the Kuiper belt. At the time of Pluto's discovery, astronomers had limited knowledge of the outer solar system and didn't anticipate the existence of so many icy worlds beyond Neptune. Most believed the solar system consisted of gas giants, rocky planets closer to the Sun, and Neptune, the icy giant at the farthest edge. Pluto was considered a single, isolated planet, despite its irregular and tilted orbit. It wasn't until 1992, 62 years after Pluto's discovery, that the second Kuiper Belt object was found. By then, it had become clear that Pluto was not unique but part of a larger collection of objects in the outer solar system. Subsequent discoveries of many Kuiper Belt objects, KBOs, confirmed the existence of this distant region beyond Neptune, home to numerous icy worlds. Pluto holds a special place in astronomy history as it was once classified as the ninth planet, a title it held for many years. However, with the discovery of more KBOs, some even larger than Pluto, the International Astronomical Union redefined the criteria for a planet in 2006. Pluto is now classified as a dwarf planet, yet it remains a pivotal discovery in our solar system's exploration. Without its discovery, we might not have pursued the study of the Kuiper Belt as extensively as we have today. This unique region is considered an extension of our solar system, as it occupies the same space and is influenced by the Sun's gravity. The eight major planets, including Neptune, constitute the inner solar system, while the Kuiper Belt stretches to the farthest reaches of the solar system. The outer solar system is distinct from the inner solar system, comprising icy objects like comets, asteroids, and dwarf planets. According to NASA, the objects in the Kuiper Belt are thought to be remnants from the early solar system, dating back about 4.6 billion years. These objects are believed to preserve conditions and materials from that time, offering a glimpse into the history of the solar system. In addition to Pluto and its moons, the Kuiper Belt contains other dwarf planets like Haumea, Makemake, and Eris, as well as countless smaller icy objects. The Kuiper Belt is a vast and unique region of the solar system that we rarely encounter. It is significantly larger than the main asteroid belt, which consists mostly of rocky bodies located between Mars and Jupiter. The asteroid belt is relatively sparse, containing small to medium-sized bodies. In contrast, the Kuiper Belt is both larger and farther from the Sun, with an estimated mass that is 20 to 100 times greater than that of the asteroid belt. The Kuiper Belt contains a significant amount of material, both in the number of objects and their total mass. This is one reason it was surprising that it took so long to discover. However, its late discovery doesn't diminish its importance in the solar system. The belt is home to a variety of celestial bodies, including dwarf planets like Pluto, Haumea, Makemake, and Eris. Pluto was discovered in 1930 by Clyde Tombaugh. It was once considered the ninth planet, but in 2006, 
the International Astronomical Union reclassified Pluto as a dwarf planet due to changes in the definition of planets. With a diameter of about 2,377 kilometers, Pluto orbits the Sun alongside other large dwarf planets in the Kuiper Belt. The study of Pluto has greatly increased our understanding of this distant region, but it was just the beginning. Haumea, discovered in 2004 by a team led by Mike Brown, has a unique elongated shape, possibly due to its rapid rotation, adding to the diversity of the Kuiper Belt. Haumea is about 1,960 kilometers in diameter and has provided valuable insights into the characteristics of Kuiper Belt objects. In 2005, Mike Brown's team also discovered Makemake, a dwarf planet about 1,430 kilometers across. Although it lacks a significant atmosphere, its surface, composed of methane, ethane, and tholin, makes it one of the brightest objects in the belt. Eris, discovered in 2005, is slightly smaller but more massive than Pluto, with a diameter of around 2,326 kilometers. Its discovery played a crucial role in reshaping the classification of planets and expanded our knowledge of the Kuiper Belt's diversity. These dwarf planets provide key insights into the belt's composition, evolution, and significance in the solar system's history. There's often confusion between the Kuiper Belt and the Oort Cloud. The Kuiper Belt contains more objects and is thought to be the origin of short-period comets, which have shorter orbital periods. The Oort Cloud, much farther from the Sun, is a spherical region that extends up to 200,000 Australian dollars and is believed to contain icy objects similar to dirty snowballs. It is thought to be the source of long-period comets with highly elliptical orbits that bring them closer to the Sun. Though both the Kuiper Belt and the Oort Cloud contain icy bodies and are potential sources of comets, they are distinct regions. Scientists are fascinated by the Kuiper Belt because it may hold remnants of the early solar system. What remains today is just a fraction of its original mass, as theorized in the NICE model. This model suggests that the orbits of the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, underwent significant changes, which influenced the distribution of matter in the Kuiper Belt. The gravitational interactions of these giant planets likely scattered much of the Kuiper Belt's material, either ejecting it from the solar system or relocating it elsewhere. The Kuiper Belt is also continually evolving. Collisions between objects break them into smaller fragments, some of which may eventually become comets. The remaining dust may be carried away by the solar wind, further depleting the belt. Despite this, the Kuiper Belt still contains about 10% of Earth's mass. Many Kuiper Belt objects, KBOs, have moons, smaller bodies that orbit a larger central object. Some KBOs even form binary systems, where two objects of similar size orbit a shared center of mass. In some cases, these objects are in physical contact, creating what's known as a contact binary. Our understanding of the Kuiper Belt has grown thanks to numerous missions, beginning with NASA's Pioneer 10. Launched in 1972, Pioneer 10 was the first spacecraft to cross the asteroid belt and study Jupiter. In 1983, it became the first spacecraft to enter the Kuiper Belt, although it didn't explore any of the icy worlds there, as only Pluto had been discovered by then. Its main mission was to study Jupiter, but its journey beyond the known planets opened the door to future exploration. Subsequent missions, such as Voyager 2 and Cassini, expanded our knowledge of the outer solar system. Voyager 2's flyby of Neptune's moon Triton in 1989 and Cassini's study of Saturn's moon Phoebe in 2004 provided valuable information, suggesting that some of these moons may have originated in the Kuiper Belt and were captured by the planet's gravity. In 2015, NASA's New Horizons probe made history with its flyby of Pluto. During its mission, it also captured images of Kuiper Belt object 1994JR1, providing insights into the characteristics of objects in this distant region. Earlier, in 2014, the Hubble Space Telescope identified three potential targets for New Horizons to explore after Pluto. Hubble's observations have been crucial in studying the Kuiper Belt, revealing new objects and guiding further exploration. The James Webb Space Telescope, with its advanced infrared capabilities, is now helping scientists explore the Kuiper Belt in greater detail. Since the belt is extremely cold, its objects emit infrared radiation with longer wavelengths, which Webb can detect. 
This allows researchers to study the composition and characteristics of Kuiper Belt objects in ways that were previously impossible. In summary, the Kuiper Belt is a dynamic and evolving region filled with icy bodies that offer insights into the history and formation of the solar system. With continued exploration and advancements in technology, we are uncovering new information about this distant part of our cosmic neighborhood. The primary objective of this extensive search was to locate an object for NASA's New Horizons probe to closely observe after its flyby of Pluto. Two objects were discovered, about 4 billion miles from Earth, currently designated as 1110113Y and 072009F. The Hubble Space Telescope has been observing the Kuiper Belt since 2003, when it captured two images of an object named 2000 FV53, taken 12 hours apart. This object was first identified in Hawaii in March 2000 and played a key role in guiding Hubble's research. Since then, Hubble has identified three additional Kuiper Belt objects, which are extremely faint, up to 100 times dimmer than 2000 FV53. Due to their faintness, astronomers rely on computer algorithms to detect them, as they are invisible to the naked eye. One of these objects was monitored by Hubble's Advanced Survey Camera on January 26, 2003, revealing it to be quite large. Things became even more exciting with the involvement of the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, whose cutting-edge technology offers new ways to study and analyze these distant objects. The James Webb Space Telescope is a state-of-the-art tool for studying the universe, especially regions like the Kuiper Belt. Its key advantage is its ability to work with infrared light. Infrared radiation is emitted by all objects warmer than absolute zero, and the intensity and wavelength of this radiation vary with temperature. Since the Kuiper Belt is extremely cold, its infrared emissions have longer wavelengths, making it an ideal target for the JWST. Different materials emit unique infrared signatures, allowing scientists to analyze the light an object absorbs or emits to determine its composition. By studying an object's infrared spectrum, astronomers can identify the types of chemicals, ices, and rocks present on its surface, such as water ice, methane, or ammonia, without relying solely on visible light. Infrared light also has the advantage of penetrating dust and gas better than visible light, providing a clearer view of objects in the Kuiper Belt, which may be shrouded in thin atmospheres or dusty environments. This ability to peer through obscuring material is invaluable when studying these ancient remnants of the early solar system, as infrared observations can reveal details that visible light cannot. Infrared studies are particularly useful for examining cooler objects, including those beyond our solar system. One of JWST's most powerful features is its large main mirror, which plays a crucial role in collecting and focusing light from distant objects. With a 21-foot diameter, the mirror's vast surface area allows the telescope to detect faint signals from distant objects, making it highly effective for observing Kuiper Belt objects that may be far away or dim. The larger mirror also enables JWST to capture sharper, more detailed images, which are essential for accurately studying the features of Kuiper Belt objects. This enhanced resolution allows scientists to gather critical information about the composition, movement, and surface structures of these distant bodies. The JWST is also equipped with a sunshield to protect its sensitive sensors from the sun's heat and light, ensuring the telescope stays cool enough to capture accurate infrared data. Despite its immense power, the JWST is surprisingly compact and is equipped with a suite of advanced scientific instruments, each designed for specific observations. Among these instruments is NIRCAM, which captures high-resolution images in the near-infrared range.